Hey guys, have you ever wondered if there's market manipulation occurring? We're all aware that there is a massive correction occurring and has been for the past about 12 months. But are there other forces at play pushing the market down and intentionally manipulating the market downward? That's what I want to cover in this video. Thank you for watching me. This is Colin with Colin Talks Crypto. I'm going to play a clip for you guys, and this is Mr. Tika Tawari. He's an editor and previously was a hedge fund manager and launcher of a hedge fund. Prior to this, he was the youngest vice president in history at Shearson Lehman. At the age of 18, he was the youngest employee at Lehman Brothers. He has appeared on Fox Business Network, Fox News Channel, CNBC, ABC's Nightline, The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, and international television networks. And I really like his perspective, and I think you'll find this very interesting. Here he is. With crypto, I know personally, I know people that would have gotten in or stayed in right. if these people weren't saying what they're saying. Right. And so this, this has really been extremely egregious. So on September 12th, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire any one of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen. People listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he'll fire anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying his it. His company is buying it. So, you're, it's just, I mean, so unethical. Right. Okay, George Soros. George Soros, in he January 24th, <laughs> price was already down, calls Bitcoin a bubble, says Bitcoin is the worst, you know, the worst investment in the world. Don't buy Bitcoin. Don't buy Bitcoin. Basically, he throws uh, gasoline on the fire yeah. at this point. And then what do we find out? So he says, bubble here. It drops 44%. Right. And then here in April, two months later, guess what we find out? Yeah. His $26 billion family office has approval to buy cryptocurrency. Right. And you only, we only knew about it publicly right. here. Here. And yeah. this is the kind of thing that George, George Soros is famous for this, talking yeah. the sterling down. Yeah. And what did he do? He stole the pensions of all the little people. Yeah, made a billion. Yeah. Okay. So then here now, Goldman Sachs, this again, February 7th, most cryptocurrencies will crash to zero. Now I remember when they said this in February and I had through my network, I knew that Goldman Sachs was setting up a crypto trading desk. Absolutely knew they were setting up a crypto trading desk. And I then, remember you telling me that. Right. And then uh, of course they were denying it. No, yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we're not. No, we're not. Yeah. Price falls down 27%, and then what do we find out? We find out here, uh, they say BTC zero, and then we find out just before May, new trading desk. Not only that, they put $400 million to buy a cryptocurrency trading platform. Okay, so February 7th, L, it's all going to zero. May, oh, we're gonna, we just spent $400 million just on a, on a flyer. And they're not the only ones? No, no. Um, so... You have a lot of institutions that are coming. You had Christine Lagarde from the IMF yeah. come out. And this was what's funny about this, Glenn, is it was all around the same time. It yeah. was almost like the, I can't prove collusion, but you know, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. And, and you know what? It's probably a duck. The people, they all hang out together, they all think alike. It doesn't right. have to be calling each other. Yeah. They just, they know this game. Yes. So IMF, Christine Lagarde says in the first part of the year, says all central banks should band together against right. cryptocurrency. Right. Have you ever heard her say all, all banks should band together against illegal arms? No. Or illegal drugs? No. Or human trafficking? No. No. But this nascent asset class, we must all join arms and against. This, what this did was play into people's heads that these guys are never going to let Bitcoin survive. survive. Right. And so people thought, they this is over. Selling. Yeah. One of the key lessons I learned from being involved in the market so long is rather than uh, listening to what people are saying, look at what they are doing. Correct. So this is 
what we should look at, and this is what I want people to focus on now. Billionaire hedge fund manager Stephen Cohen, who's worth between 12 to $14 billion, by far the smartest hedge fund manager in the world, I would say of the last century, is buying Bitcoin. $6,800 buying Bitcoin. Mark Lazary, Avenue Capital Group, worth about $1.7 billion, has put 1% of his net worth into Bitcoin at around this price, $7,500. Andresen Horowitz. Mark Andreessen. That's right, Mark Andreessen. An early investor in Airbnb, Skype, Facebook, just launched yeah, a 300, Coinbase, yeah, and Coinbase, just launched a $300 million fund. Wellington Capital, they have a trillion dollars in assets, are starting to get involved in Bitcoin futures. Susquehanna, the 12th largest trading firm by volume. They now have their own Bitcoin custody department, their own trading department, and they're trading Bitcoin and Ethereum. Goldman Sachs, this new CEO, David Solomon, the most pro-Bitcoin slash cryptocurrency guy on Wall Street. The most pro- Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. He's the new CEO. He's coming yep. into power shortly. BlackRock, this announcement just came out. The world's biggest asset manager. Now, last year, Larry Fink says, oh, you know what cryptocurrency and Bitcoin's good for? Yeah. Money laundering and yeah. drug dealers. Right. Right. So again, you, if you look at what he's saying, you're going to sell your Bitcoin, right? Yeah. You're going to say, oh, this is, this is yeah. all BS. But guess what is happening now? They're going to launch an ETF. They're looking at an exchange traded fund. Right. That will allow you, uh, allow anybody with a brokerage firm to make it as easy as hitting a buy button to go out and buy Bitcoin. So you've got to look at this preponderance of evidence, right? All these people are already wealthy. All these people care about their reputation. If Bitcoin is such a trashy asset, why are all these people getting involved? Misdirection. Okay. What you're saying is, They've played their card. Right. They've driven the market down. Yes. But then at the bottom, they say, don't go in. It's going to crash. And it's going to be worse. Buying. They all start buying. Yeah. Okay, guys. So I'm sure you found that very enlightening. I did as well. And what we notice here is a pattern of huge entities with lots of money. You know, it's that 1% of the 1% that have often billions of dollars. And what they're doing is they're presenting a false image to the public, which then results in fear. It's basically your classic FUD scenario where fear is pushed out on the people who then respond accordingly by selling or avoiding that asset. And you can prove that this is dishonest because the same entities that are pushing the FUD are the ones scooping up the crypto and buying into it. Their actions are not matching with their words. And um, so I found that really enlightening. I wanted to share that with you. But that wouldn't be a great ending to this video if it wasn't for what can we do about this? How can we as investors and as regular people who may not have access to billions of dollars and who are honest, take advantage of the markets and not be fooled by these lies and not be fooled by this media and market manipulation that we're seeing here. And my answer to this is education. Education is the single most differentiating factor, in my opinion, between someone who doesn't understand and know what's happening in the crypto space to someone who recognizes what's happening and can see the difference between lies and truth for himself. You see, as a person educates themselves on a subject, I feel it's necessary to become an expert. Becoming an expert in any area that you want to succeed at is of the utmost importance. And I think that's especially true in anything involving money and especially true with cryptocurrency. You see, when I heard this clip from Mr. Tawari, I found it surprising because I've never been one to be fearful when hearing bad news about crypto. And if any of you are long-term crypto advocates and people who have been in the space for many, many years, we, I think, can see usually beyond the media FUD. You know, there's Bitcoin obituaries, which is a website that shows how many times Bitcoin has died per the media. And as we all know, Bitcoin currently stands at many thousands of dollars per coin and is very, very far from dead and is in fact on a very, very long-term bull run. And so obviously it has not died despite hundreds upon hundreds of claims to the contrary. 
And so what differentiates that new public who gets fooled by the media and some of us who have been around for a while and maybe can see past it and even to the more extreme buy when it's low, right? Because that's exactly what these big entities are doing. They're buying when the price of crypto is at its bottom and maybe because they helped push it down to where they want it so they can buy it up for more for cheaper. The difference is education and becoming an expert in that field. It's very, very foolish to invest in something you do not understand because that's a lot of your hard earned money, which represents your energy. And so before you go putting money into something, make sure you understand what you're putting money into. And I think that I want to make that the message for this video is knowledge is senior to investing. You want to understand the asset class that you're investing in and you want to understand it to its very core. You want to know what is a blockchain? How does proof of work work? How does proof of stake work? What is hashing? What is a private key? What's a public key? Why is it safe to share a public key, but not a private key? All these things are critical to understand. If you couldn't answer all of those things I just said, I would beg you to please educate yourself further so that you could teach someone else. Being able to teach someone else is the ultimate test of whether you understand something or not. And if you understand those things so well that you could describe those things to someone else and teach them, then I'd say you have a pretty solid foundation and you could then at that point because you're so well educated, begin to see the truths and the lies for yourself. And when the market manipulators come around swinging their lies and crashing the price, you can see right through it. And I'm just going to say, I think that's what helps me see through it. And that's why I've been personally buying right now. I bought some EOS at $1.70. I saw it go down to $1.50. I've got some money on reserves and I'm waiting for it to go lower if it does. And the reason I have no fear whatsoever, it doesn't even phase me when the price goes down like this, is because of education and knowledge. And because I spend basically every day for the past six years for numbers of hours studying and reading everything I can get my hands on. And that's because I want to become an expert in this field and understand it truly for myself. So guys, that's the message I wanted to leave you with. You do not have to be the effect of market manipulation and you can take control over this with knowledge and education, which is your ultimate weapon for survival. And if you think about it, I mean, it really makes total sense. In any career or any job that you've ever succeeded truly well at, it's because you've been utterly competent and knowledgeable about that subject. And so it's the same with anything. If you want to be truly competent and successful with crypto, you need to truly understand it. So guys, learn all you can, make decisions for yourself, and do great at investing. And I want to end off on this video from some very inspiring and final words from Mr. Tiwari. When I was first exposed to Bitcoin, I thought it was a fraud and a Ponzi scheme. I said, you know, this just doesn't make any sense. A bunch of guys that are mining this kind of magic internet money and we're going to say now it has a value. It just seems ridiculous to me. And then I saw Bitcoin crash, right? Bitcoin went from seven. I saw it go from seven dollars to 1200 and then crashed to 200. And I thought, OK, well, that's the end of Bitcoin then. And then something really interesting happened. You see, when something's fraudulent or it's a bubble, when it crashes, it goes to zero, right? World Bernie Tom Madoff went to zero. Bernie Madoff went to zero. Enron went to zero. It doesn't have any value. And then I looked at Bitcoin and it was still worth about $3 billion. And I said, okay, I'm missing something here. So then I heard a speech given uh, in uh, January of 2016 and I finally understood the power of Bitcoin and the blockchain. I realized this was a way that people who didn't know each other, like each other or trust each other could transact in a yeah. trustless way and that we could own value that nobody else had any claim over, which is not the way the world works right now. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, if you own real estate, stocks, bonds or gold, if the government wants to take your money, there's really nothing you can do about right. it. The beauty about cryptocurrency is if you keep your private key, your password safe and don't blab it to the world that what you own, no one can take that from you. Right. And that's that's never happened before. The huge transfer of wealth that's happening right now. The last time I saw something like this was back during 1994 to 1995. In the in the early 
uh, to mid 90s, individuals were making just enormous amounts of money buying companies like Dell, AOL, Microsoft, uh, Netscape, and some of these smaller internet stocks. And the institutions had completely missed that bull market. And so they were scoffing at these so-called lemmings. And so during 1994 to 1995, we had a bit of a bear market. And so, again, institutions were out saying that, oh, anybody buying Internet stocks, you're idiotic. And so you had a lot of people selling their AOL, selling their Microsoft, selling their Dell shares. Guess who was buying? It was the institutions. If you look at a chart of institutional allocation to uh, venture capital Internet deals, it doubled between 1994 to 1995, which was exactly when institutions were saying, oh, this is just a market for idiots. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be buying this stuff. Mm -hmm. So they, they literally stole all this wealth that should have been in the hands of individuals that owned Dell, Microsoft, and AOL. And then from 1995 to 2000, of course, you know, we saw $5 trillion come into the market and the biggest bull market we've ever seen. So this blueprint of creating fear in order to get cheap prices is, is nothing new. So and you we, know, hang on just a second yeah, before you go on. Yeah. This one is really important to me because right. the housing crisis, those banks, they bought up all of those houses. They right. were the ones who caused the problem. Right. Then they were talking everything down, down. and saying, I'm just taking the junk off the table. Yeah. That's not junk now. It's not junk. When, it, when it's dropped 40 to 60 percent, it's not junk. So this happened between 2011, 2012. Blackstone Group buys 50,000 homes. But during this period of time, the regular individual couldn't get a mortgage, right? It was virtually impossible to get right. a mortgage during this time, exactly when institutions were buying. And then the dot-com crash in 03, if you can go back and look at old CNBC clips during 03, yes. even as the market was starting to come up, oh, don't buy tech stocks. No, they're evil. Don't buy tech stocks. Don't buy tech stocks. But institutions, if you looked at the 10Ks, the Qs, and all of the filings, the quarterly filings, they were all loading up this on is, tech. This is how the rich get richer. Yes. They know. They're connected. A lot of times they're coordinating yes. uh, without the insider trading. This right. is not illegal to do. No. The um, manipulating the news cycle, if yes. you're smart about it, is, is right. they can get away with it. Nobody's ever been arrested for anything like so, this. All right, guys. I hope you found this useful. Please share this video with anyone you feel this will help. And please comment. Please tell me what you thought about this. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And I'll talk to you again soon. This is Colin Talks Crypto.